uh, as an introduction to the new physics or the angelic physics I would like to share with you the following um, the, the, the new physics or the angelic physics then has to do with the fact that um, that science is to return to the creator from which it came and science of course it deals with the, the, the laws of creation and these laws then um, have to, to embrace or they have to come in line with the creative act of God who created everything. So with regards to physics we have mathematics and scientific reasoning and with regards to the spirit world we have the word of God. We are now dealing with the question of where the two meet. At this point of our discussion, please do not forget that if God exists, the mundane world that we see all around us actually originated from the spirit world. Um, I mean, it is very clear that God says that um, He spoke creation into existence. And, and of course we know that God is spirit according to the Bible. Um, uh, in the chapter on faith, um, in Hebrews chapter 11, the following is written, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, an assurance of things not seen. For by it men of old gained approval. By faith we understand that the worlds or the eons were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. In other words, God who is spirit had to make the natural from the spirit. Modern science also point in that direction. If you would simply look at the Big Bang, for instance, what caused it? What was there before this infinitesimally small point that science cannot explain? What was before it? Yet the Word of God clearly says in Hebrews 11.3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Spirit came before matter and it is now discovered that it is through a type of symmetry breaking of that that we have this mundane universe or the, the visible material universe. Think of it in the following way. It is only when you have, when you go below a certain degree of heat that the metal would have its polarity. Um, something to also to consider with regards to that um, there, must, there is so much power in spirit um, if we look at Einstein and the nuclear bomb what we have is that from a little small bit of material immense energy can, can be released and so you can imagine that I mean this is only um, energy and matter that we take into account here but what is the effect when when uh, you look at spirit and the energy uh, the amount of energy that is actually contained in the spiritual for instance Jesus says that if you um, if you would speak to a mountain to remove itself and not doubt in your heart but believe then that mountain actually has to obey you and I mean this has to do with spirit it has to do with the word of God what you speak 
So just to, to give you an idea, just the very word truth tells one that we are passing from a point of simply the mundane into a world of unseen qualities. Think of love, joy and peace, or faith and integrity. These qualities cannot be seen, yet they exist, and as a matter of fact, rule people's lives. Most leading scientists over the years have strongly believed in them. On a lighter side, um, if you marry somebody or beget your children, are you driven by scientific fact or do you, do you, do you pass that line into the qualities of the unseen? I mean, uh, of course, it is love that drives us and that causes us. And also on the, on the other side, it's a hate that causes us to, to do things. And um, so it is not simply the material um, laws that dictate man. But simply on the level of the mundane, Eternity, which is actually outside of time, is also hinted at when we consider the immense level of micro and macro worlds we can probe. What did man know about the micro world before the invention of the microscope and the discovery of quantum mechanics? What did we know about the macro world before the advances in astrophysics and the exploration of our universe? These worlds could not be seen and yet they very well existed. Does not nature itself teach us that man's own natural ability of sight is so much limited if we simply consider his natural perception in the electromagnetic spectrum alone? This is the area that we can observe with our eyes. What worlds lie beyond and how short-sighted to make assumptions on the little we know as human beings, as if, um, as if all is open and clear to us. Um, I've already quoted Isaac Newton some time ago, the great Christian scientist who said, I don't know what I may seem to the world, but as to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than the ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. <laughs> so here we have this great scientist in history saying that, that all what he, what he amassed or um, in his research, he was only like a small boy playing on the seashore, um, finding or looking at, at pebbles. If we, if we would look at, the, at science in the light of the Eternal One. Think about this, in one day we may find new discoveries that set back our knowledge light years from the days before, or from the day before. As an example, what do you think did Saul Perlmutter's research on supernovas and the outcome of the universe proof they discovered the almost unbelievable fine-tuning of the cosmological constant and the speeding up of the universe by a power that is utterly unknown. Check up the accelerating expansion of the universe under his findings. If you can um, go into the, into the international web and l look up um, Saul Perlmutter and his discoveries. Interestingly, is interestingly enough, mathematics too hint at infinity when we, cons when we consider um, the infinite and numbers. But to take it one step further, what do we know about the existence of things in other dimensions? And yet mathematics and physics dictate that these dimensions exist. 